Hello, friends. Charlie here on what could be a rather sad but historic occasion, the very last broadcast by the CWS Manchester Band. If you keep a keen eye and ear on the brass band scene, as I'm sure many of you do, you'll probably know that the future of the CWS Band has been very uncertain ever since last autumn when we first heard about the CWS withdrawing its sponsorship. At the time of this recording, the band is under notice that the sponsorship ceases as of March the 31st. Well, by the time you hear this, something may have happened to keep them playing after all. We all certainly hope so. Meanwhile, of course, the show goes on. Nothing's going to stop our conductor, Derek Garside, giving the beat into one of his and your favourite marches, George Allen's Senator. <laughs> Senator by George Allen. And now it's solo time for the principal cornet of the CWS Manchester band, Stephen Corbett. Stephen is one of the top people in Britain for tricky fingering and triple tonguing. But you won't be hearing any from him today because he's chosen a beautiful slow melody, the one that's usually sung to the words by Rabbi Burns, My love is like a red, red rose.
My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose, the Gordon Langford arrangement of a beautiful song beautifully played by Stephen Corbett. I've often wondered what it must feel like to stand up there as a soloist being conducted by somebody who is also a famous player of the same instrument. Do you feel nervous because he's alive to all the little details that somebody else might miss? Or do you feel more confident because he's been there before you and knows the way? I must go into it sometime with both Stephen Corbett, our soloist, and Derek Garside, our conductor. Derek spent 25 years as Principal Cornet with the CWS Manchester Band before becoming musical director in 1972. He was away from them for about five years between 1976 and 1981. But it's not all that much of a break when you trot up nearly 40 years of music. Derek was still a player and not yet the conductor when our next number first came out. The year was 1970. The composer, then just 25 years old, was Edward Gregson and the piece was prelude for an occasion. was Edward Gregson's prelude to an occasion and that's an obvious cue for me to tell you about the great occasions in the history of the CWS Manchester Band. It was started in 1900 by a group of employees of the CWS tobacco factory 
but it didn't really come into its own until it was reorganised just after the Second World War in 1946. Then it started to go places, including the National and the Open Championships. It won the Open four times, and the National twice. Tonight's conductor, Derek Garside, was a player in the band at all these victories, but the greatest occasion of them all, he tells me, was winning the National Championship for the first time in 1962. The conductor was then Alex Mortimer. On that particular day, Alex Mortimer was not at all well. He was suffering badly with his chest and was practically disabled by a fit of coughing just before he was due to go on. What well, it ended with him being pushed on in a wheelchair and having to conduct sitting down. Of course, the judges in their isolated box were not allowed to see any of this. All they had to work on was the sound that Alex Mortimer drew from the CWS Manchester band in the test piece of the year. The Frank Wright arrangement of Verdi's The Force of Destiny. <laughs> Dramatic music played under dramatic circumstances. Verdi's overture to the force of destiny, taking the CWS Manchester band to their first national victory in 1962, with an ailing Alex Mortimer overcoming his illness to bring the band to victory. Most present and past members of the band regard that as its finest hour, especially tonight's conductor Derek Garside, who is on that record as principal cornet. But back to today and into a lighter mood. Here, arranged by Sam Watts, is Laurie Johnson's impression of the girl with the red hair.
the girl with the red hair. I like the look of her, and the sound too. Well, now for something we've not had before. It's by L. Hogarth Lear, who's the lighter side of Mr. Elgar Howarth. He wrote this for the Grimethorpe Colliery Band, but it's now available to any other band that can catch up with it. It's certainly a piece for fast movers. In fact, it goes pell-mell. Reminds me of the old-fashioned party game for kiddies where you pass the parcel. Only this time they were passing the scales and exercises around the CWS Manchester van, and they were doing it pell-mell. That being the title of that number by L. Hogarth Lear. When he's not composing things like that, he changes his name back to Elgar Howarth, as which he's equally well known for both conducting and playing the trumpet. I've been thinking about the instruments that composers play. Holst and Elgar were both trombonists. Rossini played the cello, 
and there are dozens and dozens of composers who are also players of the piano or organ. But can you think of a well-known classical composer who played the drums? That was how Massenet earned his living until people began to take notice of his operas. He is part of one of them, the ballet music from La Cid. <laughs> finale of the ballet music in Massenet's opera Le Cid, arranged for brass by Howard Snell. That's the only bit of the opera ever played today, although I'm told that the rest of it is well up to the same standard. Well, let's come up to some more recent music for our second solo spot tonight. This is one of the Carpenter's great hits, Goodbye to Love. It's been arranged by Ray Farr, and it's a showcase for our solo horn, Roy Garlick.
Goodbye to Love, featuring the beautiful solo horn of Roy Garlick, and that brings us to our last number. Once again, the CWS Manchester Band have chosen a colourful classic by a French composer of the last century. This time it's by Gounod, and it's the Queen of Sheba. for the Queen of Sheba. And is that the last we'll ever hear from the CWS Manchester Band conducted by Derek Garside? I hope not. Time alone will tell. 
Meanwhile, my producer, Peter Pilbeam, joins me, Charlie Chester, in hoping that you'll be with us, same time, same place, next week, when once again we'll listen to the band.